Okay, good morning class. And uh, today what we are going to do is we're going to start with the second unit, which is benefits, costs, and limitations of advertising and promotion. Okay, so uh, we will start with uh, with what we have is what we had done in our previous unit about classification of advertising. Okay, so we'll just do a quick recap on it. So when we talk of classification of advertising, now advertising can be classified uh, through different ways. One is on the basis of target audience, which could be your consumers or it could be on a business level. Second way is by geographical area that is either within the country or internationally. Third comes up by choosing the medium, or uh, that could be print media, broadcast, mail, or interactive. And the last way is by purpose, where we talk about the product or own products, commercial, non-commercial, actions, awareness. Okay, now a little more on details. Now what happens is, now as we already know that uh, the advertisers, they actually pay for advertising. Advertising uh, for accomplishing a wide range of goals, okay? And uh, when we are taught the ad objectives, okay? The ad objectives, it's basically targeting for long-term branding communication or short-term direct response advertising. Now, branding, when we say long-term branding, branding is about building the image or reputation of a company, okay, that uh, distinguishes itself uh, from, the, from its competitors in the marketplace. That's why it's long-term. Whereas when we talk of short-term, short-term and uh, advertising, it's uh, in response to some changes. So that's where the sales promos comes into play where, for the main purpose of uh, having revenue generation or cash flow. Right. So it based on the company's obje objectives or uh, budget target of the audience. So normally when uh, companies advertise, they advertise through any of these six ways, broadcast media, print media, support media, direct marketing, product placement or Internet. OK, let's uh, go into a little more details. Now, when we talk of broadcast media, it could be TV or radio. The advantages of television is there are there's an enough uh, offer for creative opportunities. There is a scope for a dynamic message and a wide audience. But the problem is it's uh, advertising through television is quite expensive and it generally has a negative attitude, right? Uh, why on the TV viewers? Because they have a negative attitude towards commercials because it's a break. It just stops. It's a break in the entertainment uh, program that they're watching or anything. It's just that just comes in the middle and it's just uh, breaks their concentration, right? Uh, but both radio and TV have uh, fleeting mes messages, so it's a variety, like it can be very confusing also, right? A lot of messages come up. Radio is comparatively more affordable for small businesses because it's uh, less costly and it, there is scope for repetition of the advertisement and more frequent. But the disadvantage that comes up here is there are uh, the audience which is there, they are quite distractive. Now, distractive in the sense because uh, when you hear something, we tend to get more distracted than when we see something, we are more focused. The second type that is print media that could be magazine or newspaper. Now, for magazines, what happens? Uh, it has it a uh, highly selective audience, so you know whom to target to, and uh, the visual visuals, right? It's has a it's much there is more scope for uh, come putting in vis visuals in magazines as compared to uh, newspapers, and they target a very narrow customer segment whom they know that they're going to actually uh, purchase it. So it's a niche market. It's a very narrow, concentrated market, and it's a totally new market. They look for new market where people would actually uh, would want to be, people would be interested and would actually want to uh, purchase those magazines and uh, would actually benefit the organization. But the disadvantage is it's very costly. Magazines are costly, and there's a long 
lead time requires uh, that's lead time means uh, it's a time gap between planning and actually implementing an ad so that takes a long time because you put in some glossy pictures you it has to be attractive and so it takes a lot of time and a lot of money and the audience size is very limited newspapers on the other hand it is quite affordable for local businesses right and uh, it can target the entire uh, wide range of geographical uh, segment uh, because if it's a universal product or services and uh, it's considered to be a credible medium right uh, why and people accept it because newspapers and people feel are more authentic uh, and ads can be placed within a day or two of purchase of the newspaper so that if someone wants to put an ad uh, they can say that tomorrow's newspaper I want to put an ad or after two days and so you can do it it can be done at a short time the lead time is very less right but the problem is like it's uh, becoming declining in circulation for more people are today in uh, they're more attracted to the social media where they get new information immediately they don't wait for the newspaper right newspaper uh, comes out uh, they give newspaper the news after 24 hours so which you can get it on the inter internet or social media immediately and so what happens is it has a short time very short lifespan because at the end of the day when uh, you we just uh, throw the newspaper and also there is limited scope for virtual creativity uh, because uh, the newspaper will be basically covering the news or 20, that has happened in 24 hours throughout the world so there is very limited place for you to actually put in some visual uh, ads like uh, so it takes a lot of space so it becomes a constraint may not be possible to get now third type is support media where we have billboards transits bus benches aerial directories and uh, trade publication trade publications comes up uh, or directories are there advertising directories are found and you see on the bus benches bus benches on the uh, bus stops on the transits when we are on transit or on the boards hoardings it's there that's a support media and that has a wider audience both in the local and regional market and uh, you can increase the frequency of message exposed to the targeted market segment so more people can actually see it. you're crossing up and down daily if you're going in the going to your office and coming this from and taking the bus from you're taking the bus from the same bus stop so you're seeing it daily twice so the frequency is much more frequency of exposure to that uh, ad is much more you're seeing it twice so it has a greater effect direct marketing can be either direct mail email or telemarketing the advantage is you can get direct response uh, there can be weekly or monthly email uh, new newsletters to which allows the company to update the customers about the brand products and other messages right uh, so it also allows the companies to track the customer responses and helps advertisers to come up with better measures with regard to return on investment. The telemarketing is what it's a way of doing a survey on customers and taking their feedbacks uh, with, uh, with regards to new products, new upgrades or renewals. Direct mail is the most common format of uh, direct marketing where the company sends mails or postcards to targeted customers for promoting their products deals or promotions okay next comes up is the product placement now product placement is uh, this is done with the help of some tv shows commercials movies and things where the company gives compensation to these uh, to these uh, program to the organizations which are holding these shows or programs for uh, advertising their product uh, at the time when they are actually uh, showing these entertainment and their entertainment and showing it to their audiences. So coming up, it's a suppose uh, in the middle of an, a scene, uh, the, so the, uh, the, actually the program talks about one of the products, products and its uses. So that's one way, this is called, uh, uh, this is a way where it actually companies integrate their ads with the entertainment. So this is integrated marketing, as we say. Okay, and uh, what uh, what happens here? The customers cannot avoid any messages because it's part of that uh, entertainment. But 
since the message is exposed is there only for a short span of time you don't go on talking about the product for long so the effect is there positive effect in the minds of the consumers right they don't get bored okay now the next question that comes up is uh, next topic that we have is is economic and social aspects of advertising so we're talking of the value of products so the question that comes up is how does advertising increase the value of products how does it do it by showing positive image about the product by actually educating the consumers about the uses of the products making the consumers aware how the, about the positive usage how it can be used and we can also sometimes associate the products to who we are or communicate who we are through the product we buy so we can actually do it we relate ourselves with the products that we are buying right so we can actually communicate so that's how it comes up right associating associating with the product to who we are or we who we are through the product that we are going to buy so that sometimes it relates like uh you know if uh, it talks about the type of food that we eat the type of clothes that we wear the type of products that we wear that talks about our taste our background our uh, our thinking our viewpoint so it gets related okay so the next thing that comes up is effect on prices effect on prices uh what happens are uh, increases in demand demand increases increase in demand leads to what uh economies of scale bulk production happens more production means there will be producing in bulk so what happens cost of production reduces so when you produce in bulk the cost goes down the price also starts reducing but without compromising on the quality next comes up is effect on consumer demands and choices now the question that comes up is is advertising the only way to increase demand so but you know what advertising has nothing to do with consumer choices so that that is that we have to think about it like uh, this is like a uh, the demand and the choices so you cannot uh, in the consumers demand consumer choices advertising cannot be the only way or advertising at time does not have anything to do it depends on our needs our social needs our uh, daily needs so even if it's advertising is good even if the product is good if our means are limited economic means that's where economic means comes in play we will not be buying it we cannot afford to so that's the main thing okay effect on the business cycle so should firm be advertising when business cycle is down so if there is a depression so what happens up here is now when the business cycle is up when the economy is is going through a good phase so what happens it helps the company to actually this advertising actually helps advertising helps to increase the revenue of the company more people are buying but when the economy is going through a recession what happens advertising it actually acts as a way of encouraging buyers to buy it acts as a stabilizing force people may not want to buy because it, it's in a recession people want to hold money so uh, advertising actually it's a force which forces you to think that yeah you can if you can buy it now and keep it now later on it may be difficult for you to purchase that things can worsen so it encourages see these are some of the uh big or famous uh ads that we have right so which uh actually uh talks about all these uh the different things different uh tries to give some messages we have so very famous uh duracell we have nivea we have mcdonald's burger kings right so it's actually projecting some image forcing people to actually also come up and uh, purchase things and uh, when things may not or people forcing people to think about it to purchase right it lasts even longer so this, this is something right so there's again less new green bigger size which we, which will make you force okay so if i can buy it will last for longer 
Okay. Social impact of advertising. Um, first thing comes up is deception in advertising. Deception in advertising. So uh, how was the question that comes up is how is the relation between buyers and sellers maintained? What happens if sellers show deceptive image or exaggerated image in the advertising? And how can you solve this issue? The first question, the relationship can be maintained if the buyers are satisfied with what they saw in advertisement and what they are getting it after buying that product, what you see and what you buy. If it matches, then you are satisfied, right? Relationship can be maintained. Okay, the relationship cannot be healthy between buyer and seller if they deceive, if the buyer, sellers deceive the buyers, right? And uh, these problems can be overcome. How? If the seller keeps their ads clean and displays the right image of the product. Clean image, clean ad, which is really um, not offensive, and displays the right image, not deceiving. Okay, so the type of deceiving uh, advertisement, deceptive advertisement that we have is hidden fees, which does not say so. You say you, say you buy it for one rupee, but uh, it could be something else. Like it's not plus that tax and all these things. It comes up. So there was a time when uh, which, uh, the flights would come up and say you can buy your tickets in 99 rupees. Right? It's a but people get oh it's only 99, but it's not 99. 99. Plus, that plus is hidden, okay? When the advertiser does not fully disclose the true cost of the item, you do not say this, the cost, the tax is not said. We say, no, only 99, only $99, we do not say 100. 100 is one more, 99 is one less, so that has a psychological effect, okay? Uh, activation, say for instance, activation fees of cell phones, that is not said or pre-delivery inspection charges of a new car. It's not said you're buying a car, just the car cost, but pre-delivery charges, that's not being told. So this is deceptive when you're deceiving your customers. Okay, the next thing that comes up is bait and switch. Now, bait and switch. Bait and switch is a technique like right? when the advertisement, it actually uh, mesmerizes or entices you with the product, but uh, makes a significant switch when you go to purchase it right uh, you are totally mesmerized with it but when you actually go to purchase your image totally changes so bait is to actually entice you to actually force you to make you come up it's it's a bait is a type or it's a how to what should i say um Bait actually is a, it's a way of actually to entice you, to force you to think about, uh, to actually think that uh, where you can actually start uh, thinking of how to uh, think, uh, how whether you should buy it or not. You're not thinking of it, fine, but then the customers actually uh, would entice you. Bait, entice is the right word, entice you to actually buy that product. You get so mesmerized, you say, it's so convinced that you go. But then when you actually go to purchase it, your opinion totally changes, you switch, you start hating it. It's a significant change, right? And sometimes what happens, an offer can feel like a bait. It can, you are being offered, it's, an, it's baiting, it's a, but, uh, and switch, bait and switch, but it's not. Can feel like bait and switch but it's actually not, it can happen. Like uh, advertisers can do so. So, but you know what? Bait and switch advertising is illegal. It is very much illegal. It can, advertisers should not do so. They should not deceive their consumers. Okay, next comes up is misleading claims. Misleading claims. This is where the advertisers use tricky language to make the consumers believe that they're getting one thing, whereas when they're in, what is happening is they're getting less. They are getting much, when in reality, they're getting much less, but they're paying much more. In reality, saying something and doing something else. Say, this is a very good example. That is where the DIY model plane 
for a price that seemed like a steal, okay? Things like which it's easy to assemble, it really flies, it was there. But uh, what was inside was just a blank sheet of paper with a stress which had a set of instructions on how to make a paper plane. It did not uh, actually say, it did not, the plane was not there, the model was not there. It was just an instruction on how to do it. So that's the main thing, that was, it's cheating, right? So question that comes up in this case is, did they break the law? Did they deceive? Yes, of course they did so. They did deceive the consumers. Ambug ambiguous or best case scenario photography. Take a photograph of a picture of a product in a way that seems that, that makes them seem far better than actually they are. The advertisers would take a picture of that of that product in a such a way and where people would actually in post it and so people would actually feel it's so good actually they are not okay so what happens sometimes we we accept that picture you know as consumers we accept it because we we know that what happens we we have the feeling that the photographs are taken by expert designers and artists right and which takes a long period of time right but then what happens when we actually go to buy, we see that it is of a much poor quality. But if that happens, what we can actually do is we can demand a refund. We can always demand a refund because it says the picture it says something, but you're giving something as it's of a poor quality. So we want a refund. It can happen. Okay. So see this. This is where the ad comes up. Like a uh, the whale pool shows, but actually it's like this. Fast food items, give this. This is the ad of the burger. And see this, how the burger is. See, it's so bad, but it shows so good. The picture is so good. It, uh, it may actually attracts us. And we as consumers, we get attracted and we get carried away. So next comes up is going out sale, business sales. Okay. Which here, what happens is rising the raising the prices uh, from the merchandise that was already on sale, and then marking them down. So, sale for sale products, you already hike the price of the goods, and then say that fifty percent you hike, and say okay, uh, twenty five percent discount. So it's not discount. We are ending up paying more. Misusing the word free. Right, when sometimes we say in the sales is buy one, get one free. So what is it? The second item, it's not free. Why? Because you have to buy both together. It's not free for you. And the second item's price is actually included in the first item also. So it's height. Changing the measurement units and standards, right? Example is like changing from pounds and ounces to metric to hide the fact that the product was downsized. So you just uh, decrease like the size, the size, the measuring, measuring of the product, right? You just uh, change it. You just, instead of pounds and ounces, which is much higher, to metric. So you lower it down to uh, why? To say what the fact that the product size is still, it's much less. You don't say that. Sometimes we do it on purpose to do it. We highlight it uh, to. Uh, Portray a positive uh, effect on the consumers. Have positive effect. Fillers. Now, food often has fillers to increase its weight. Right? Say, so for example, meat were in injected with broth or prime. So that increases the total weight of the food. And but actually, it's much less. Misuse of items. This includes like sometimes which says uh, misuse of terms. Terms mean sometimes the ads say that, okay, light, this is quite light and this is quite natural. So this is misuse of terms. Um, so we get, uh, we as consumers, we get uh, very much uh, attracted to these words, carried away, oh, it's very natural. This is lighter. Actually, it's not. Incomplete comparison. This is an example here is when we say a product is better than another, but not explaining in what way it is better. You just say, oh, my product is better than some other product. But what is, how? 
that's not said it's way inconsistent comparison where a product is compared to only the competitors it can beat it, uh, somewhere up there if you're there uh, you talk about the products uh, as you're saying you're better than the competitors so below you who you can easily beat but someone who's high up you don't talk about them misleading illustrations yeah where uh, pictures where we have the product is a picture as being much bigger in size than actually it is much much bigger in size but when you buy it's much small and we then pay the price right we think it's a big thing but actually not coloring okay that's where uh, putting yellow oranges in a red mesh pack to make them appear riper than they actually actually they are okay yellow oranges you're putting it in a bag red red mesh bag to if you put in a red mesh bag that would appear that from outside that they're red they're much riper actually they are not so deceiving people angel dusting angel dusting uh, this is where adding a very small amount of something beneficial so it can be labeled as such say for instance a uh, cereal a cereal a cereal that contains 10 essential vitamins we say that this is a cereal which has 10 10, 10 essential vitamins it's really good but actually what happens is the amount of uh, vitamins that is is put in that is much less than the recommended dietary allowance amount of vit vitamins are there those 10 essential the quantity is less than what it should be actually acceptance by default so it's actually referring to a contract where the consumer must opt out of a service or feature and if they don't they will be charged for it okay so they should be it's a contract which you wear by it says that consumers should should opt out of a service or feature they should opt they should just come out of it and if they don't uh, if they don't opt out of it they will be charged for it so the question that comes up is should advertiser deceive right so what happens up here is when we say uh, we look into this aspect from different uh, points from consumers point of view consumers do suffer consumers make ununiform decisions because of this deceiving factor with that guys are doing this some they wake they waste their money on a product or service businesses also suffer right consumers do not like it when they are cheated they're conned so most and most cases most people will not fall for the same trick more than once and sometimes what happens when an angry or disappointed customer they will be actually not happy through they will through negative word of mouth they it goes to the social media laws the laws come into place and so that affects businesses affect employees also suffer uh employees are the ones who have to bear the consequences they are the ones who deal with the unhappy consumers that's a uh, customers or consumers they are even directly blamed for a product which is malfunction functioning and so what happens when employees are subjected to all these unpleasant conditions they do not want to work they would like to leave the work they would not work so hard uh, provide problems for the company so in other words it's not good for the advertisers to deceive like right? so businesses suffer come employees suffer consumers also suffer next topic that we have is subliminal subliminal advertising subliminal subliminal messages uh, and when we talk of advertising so they are basically designed to engage people subconsciously subliminal is talking of subconscious okay how to engage consumers subconsciously through colors shapes words that would make the consumers uh, uh, to make small but powerful associations between a brand and an intended meaning so they would make try to it's hitting the subconscious mind of consumer making them feel making them think unconscious uh, subconsciously and uh, without intentionally unintentionally and trying to associate the brand with some meaning right 
that uh, say for instance like McDonald's, oh, oh it's so loving, it's yummy. So that you know, is it. we really need it. So that's how it goes. See this order and we are uh, actually uh, uh, relating themselves with the ad. Say Pepsi versus Coca Cola Halloween ad. Like which one would you want to do it? We wish you a scary Halloween. Everyone wants to be a hero. So how do you relate? Which one would you want to relate yourself? We have the SFX magazine also, where uh, this is, these are the magazines uh, like uh, where looking at it, we would try to also become like uh, say uh, be a princess. We would like to become like we would think we are also somewhere like uh, someone really beautiful and. Uh, um a princess and baby an actress or a well-known personality and people are would like us so all these things comes and we try to relate it uh, okay now what happens is like capturing the minds capturing the minds of the consumers is the main intention of these ads okay so these ads are made in such a way where the consumers don't even realize that the ad has an impact in their mind they do not realize it it's subconscious and this results in buying the product which they don't even need. So they go end up and buying the magazines. They go end up buying those dress. They see some beautiful dress in those magazines. They see lovely dress. They feel, oh, I also think I am, I would also look so beautiful without realizing that I, it's not meant for me. Or certain things are not mine. So we, we do not think about it. We start, we stop thinking rationally. That's the meaning of subliminal advertising so it's hitting our subconscious mind okay but you know all ads don't impress all consumers at all times that happen that does not happen because majority of consumers what they buy when they buy products they look into the price and the needs that's what they look into okay next topic that we come up is advertising puffery what is advertising puffery it's an advertisement or a promotional material that makes broad, exaggerated, or boastful statement about a product or service. Okay, uh, that are subjective. That's not objective. Subjective means it's you know, the opinion of the car, of the uh, companies. It's not objective. That means it's not. Um, it cannot be measurable, and uh, for which there are no reasonable person can actually assume it to be true. There's no truth in it. Okay, so. It does not guarantee anything for the consumers also. You're just exaggerating. Puffing up, we say puffery comes from the word puffing up or exaggeration. See this, the best coffee for the best you. Who said this is the best coffee? Who said this is the best drinks? Nobody said. Or iPhone, bigger than bigger. Who said so? Okay, proof and puffery. The claim made by the puffery may be false when you're puffing out, but they are not really lies also because no one can disapprove them also. Okay, no one can prove them also, but no one can disapprove them also. If a company claims that its hamburger is the best in the world, no one can prove that the hamburger is really the best, but no one at the same time can prove that it is not. But if an advertiser says that the hamburger carries ingredients that helps to prevent cancer, that's where science comes into play, which can actually prove or disapprove. Okay, so this is this is when we say this, that is actually a false claim. This is a false claim that it would prevent cancer, right? Hyperbole. The next thing that comes up is hyperbole. Now, when we talk of puff, puffery, that exaggeration, yes, puffery, uh, hyping up things that's characterized by extra, exaggeration, talking more than what it is, and hyper. And the other thing is when we talk of hyperbole. Now, when we talk of hyperbole, hyper, hyperbole is where we talk of make, when we make uh, oversight statements, statements that cannot be verified objectively. It cannot be verified. Okay, so best hamburger in the world is beyond belief. It's just beyond belief. So, so any reason person who is rational would not take it very seriously, right? 
So, but why do advertisers actually exaggerate these things and use such uh, hyperbole statements? The only thing is to get people's attention, to make their message memorable. So that catches your mind. That's why you talk. Oh, they're saying that they're the best hamburgers. Why do you talk? Because of these uh, overstatements, these exaggerations. That's why. Okay. That's why people uh, people are very much, uh, it catches people's attention. That's why. That's a technique. So that's the main purpose. So it's, it's puffery is an ex, uh, is an advertising technique. It's an technique to create attention. It's done on purpose to gain attention of consumers. Okay. Effect on your value system. Right. So. Advertisers are using puffery. They are using endorsement from celebrities, playing emotionally with people's minds, uh, making ads which are so powerful that people are, they become so much enticed. They become helpless and they start buying products. So they become, consumers become prey, fall prey to these ads. Okay. They, these ads actually also in, results in people who have limited means to actually buy products which otherwise they would not afford to. People ending up having bad habits and sometimes buying products just because their favorite actor has endorsed the product. So what happens? This results in the cost of the whole society. The cost increases, cost, societal cost increases and it affects the values of our own self. Are we, we are actually losing our own values. We have stopped thinking. So it affects the, our value system. Subjective versus objective. Now, puffery claims are subjective, right? There's no, it's, uh, there's no such proof. And it's, uh, it's, our, it's the opinion of the advertisers. The hair salon, in any hair salon says that they have the best service. But best is what? It's, they feel it's best. But uh, best in terms of what? Who, who can tell? You, there's, it's very much subjective. It can, it's debatable. Is it really? It's, it can be. It may not be. What if it says that it has won more awards than any other salon? So then that can be actually verified. Best service cannot be verified. But when you say something which is measurable, that can be verified, right? So what you know what uh, puffery? When we talk of puffery, what do they use? They use the superlative words: best, fastest, tastiest. Freshest, that's the, that's a bit, like nothing better. Okay, next comes up is where we talk of deception. Now, deception is totally different from puffery. Puffery does not intend to deceive. It's not deceiving people. They're not giving any false claims. Okay, but uh, advertisement, now advertising that uh, deliberately misleads or give false claims is illegal. Puffery is legal. Deception is illegal. Comparing your product with that of a competitor without scientific studies uh, and saying that my, I have these, mine is, I, my product has these sort of ingredients, but whereas my competitors, that pro, they are using these products, which is harmful. You, there's no, you have not checked. You're misleading people. That is deception. So, so your competitor can actually file a case against you, right? But if you say you have a better pizza, that's puffery. You're exaggerating, right? So saying that two out of three people prefer your pizza when you have no proof about it, that is deception. That out of three, two people, why? Where is the proof? There's no proof. If you say you have a, your pizza is better, that is puffery. Saying two out of three buys your pizza, that can be actually checked, verified. So which, if you don't have proof, that is deception. So the differences between fall, a difference between false advertising and puffery. So what is it? Puffery is a legal way. It's a legal way of promoting a product or service using hyperbole or oversized statements. That cannot be verified. Whereas when we talk of false advertising, that is where fa facts, the false statements, factually false statements are used to promote a product, okay, which can be verified. Say, for instance, if you say a car gets 35 million per gallon, when it actually gets only 30 miles per gallon, that is false advertising. 
So you can verify it. See, a card will get 35 miles per gallon if you drive this car. But it can be verified. It's 35 miles per gallon. In reality, it's 30 miles uh, per gallon. So that's that's deception. Okay. So the criticism that comes up here is uh, criticism is uh, in advertising is uh, like proliferation of ads like when you are giving false ads right when you are uh, deceiving people prol proliferation comes from the word like when you uh, you distemper the ads when you are putting in false uh, false uh, information that's which can be verified use of stereotypes in ads like the same thing is being given in your ads same thing come out of the box think something when you have stereotypes like same thing going on you won't like it prototypes offensive ads some ads are really offensive offensive to the society or offensive to our uh, beliefs that happens some ads are unethical some are exaggerated exaggerating more say my burger is is better is it's the best of the lot some ads are made just to earn money materialistic that's where the these are the ad these sort of ads should not be there so this is these are the negative aspects of advertising okay so that's all that we have uh, in this unit okay uh, Okay, so that's all that we have for today. Uh, we'll see you in the next class.